So like I said before, I wasn't going to do um, episode reviews. I was just going to wait for the season uh, to end. But I had to talk about this. I really did, because the amount of, st of stupid in this episode is staggering. And also, yeah, this is where we discover who dies, and who really cares about that death, and if it e even is a death to begin with. So, we finally discover in this episode who's in the grave, who is li whose life is taken. I'm going to spoil it, because it, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, um, uh, just pause the video, go watch the episode, or back out, or do whatever. I'll give you a couple seconds to... Um, to do so. Okay, so if you're still here, I guess you want to be spoiled on the episode. So, who's in the grave? Drum roll, please! Weak ass drum roll. Anyway, yep, it's Black Canary, it's Laurel. Now, yeah, you win, all the city shippers, you win. It. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. Laurel's a love-hate character, and here's the thing. The weird thing is, throughout Season 3 and throughout Season 4, Laurel was actually getting to be a better character. I loved her evolution to Black Canary, and yeah, she did some really cool shit. But, oh man, oh man, I'll, um, you win, all of City Shippers. Laurel is officially gone, she's dead, well, we don't know if she's dead, but let's, let's, let's go into, um the other things that kind of factored in this episode. So the big thing with this episode is that Andy was approached by Malcolm Merlin to, you know, be like Damien Dark's ace in the hole, and at the same time you gotta, you know, to get his idol and all that, and, yeah. I also, like, uh, so yeah, um, when he's working with, um, you know, with Team Arrow, Diggle's just instantly like, oh yeah, we can totally trust him, even though he tried to kill us, but he did help me save my wife once. And I totally trusted him. Even though, you know, let's talk about that for a second. First off, I, I totally forgot this, but Andy has a wife and son that still think he's dead. And no one has brought that up. No one has brought that up at all. In fact, yeah, like I said, I forgot about that, uh, that fact until, like, I was watching Steve Baxi's review last night of this episode, and he was like, yeah, um, did, you know, Andy has a wife and son that, you know, still don't know if he's, you know, still don't know that he's alive and well and with Team Arrow. I mean, John could have been like, at least said, yeah, you're, you know, you have a wife and kid that are still there. And he, and he could have said, no, I'm not ready to come back or something like that. I'd have accepted that. I would have accepted that I'm not ready to go back to that life yet. You know, I just, but something like that. But yeah, the big thing with this episode is, hey, uh, hey, Andy, it's me, John. I'm going to totally trust you now, even though you did that one thing, so I'm going to trust you, even though the got my best friend, who I considered a brother, at his, you know, <laughs> who I even considered a brother at my re and best man at my wedding, uh, my remarriage to Lila, uh, <laughs> and uh, who I consider a brother more than you, I... I'm not going to trust him and totally put my faith in you, even though you've only done one thing to prove uh, to prove you're not a bad guy. Oh, God damn it. Diggle was just an idiot in here, and Diggle's one of my favorite characters, but in here, I'd have been like, yeah, all of, you know, and then they kind of, but yeah, to their extent, um, they did say that Oliver was the one to say to trust him, and then Oliver's just suddenly like, yeah, don't trust him. But I think, yeah, the better thing with Oliver was that you know, you can trust him, but put that trust sparingly. That's what he was trying to say, but Diggle was like, no, that's not happening. Bro my brother is totally a good guy now. Yeah. <laughs> also, when er when um, Oliver's interrogating him as, as, the Gre as Green Arrow and kind of torturing him, was anyone else thinking, that's a Batman scene. Like, he's just going, swear to me! Like, that's a Nolan Batman moment. It's hysterical more than it is... It's hysterical and stupid more than it is dark and serious, if anything else. Um, but anyway, moving right along, uh, what else did I want to say? The big thing with this episode is that it blares in your face of who's going to die. Because there's this moment where, um, da where Dark's uh, wife talks about how she wants... Uh, Laurel to be the district attorney, and she's like, 
Yeah, I totally, you know, uh, yeah, but it would totally mean I would give up being the Black Canary, and she's kind of going through this whole thing of, do I want to be the Canary, uh, you know, the Black Canary, or do I want to be um, someone else, or do I want to be this person and this and have this job that I've always wanted? To which I respond with, the moment they started saying that stuff and her trying to come to peace with it, I was like, yeah, they're just hitting you over the head that she's dying, isn't she? She's the one dying. Um... But yeah, we kind of all suspected that it would be Laurel, or because there, because um, her mother was there. There were leaked photos, and apparently her mother was there. And the and so it was kind of it was at that point it was kind of like yeah, it's either going to be Laurel or Captain Lance. But after this episode, like the beginning goes like, do you get it? Do you, I bet you can't tell who's going to die now. I bet you can't tell. There, that's the, the writing in here is that stupid. Also, another thing that just made me just go, really, was when they get the idol back, Oliver just instantly says, I've seen this idol before, to which, also, I love how Thea's like, wow, you've totally done, you know, this is... <laughs> I love how, also, sometimes they get so meta about this, is like, yeah, the, oh, you didn't you didn't tell us something? That's a first. I was like, thank you, Thea. But still, Oliver just brings this up now, not after they got the idol from him the first time around. You just suddenly bring this up. And the other thing with season... You know, mark this day. I'm giving some credit to season three. Was that Diggle says something that, you know, you've never left the island. And Oliver's like, yeah, I never left the island. You know, I always carry that darkness inside of me. Wasn't the whole point of season three to move on beyond that darkness? I don't know about you guys, but that's not really moving on. That's more like regression, if anything else. So, yeah. look Now... Let's go on to the big death, because there may be a fact that she may not be dead in the sense of, oh, you know, dead, dead. Because this may be the same kind of dead they did with uh, Roy. Because there's this moment where, um, there is this moment in here where Oliver's talking to Laurel, and she talks about, oh, I've always loved you and all that, and I was like, this is giving nothing but doing stupid, but giving, um... And this makes me want to have all, you know, Laurel and um, Oliver back together even more, because, yeah, that's it's Black Canary and, and Green Arrow, you know? And the, throughout this season, I can't, yeah, I'm not the only one who thought this, but yeah, this whole season made you want Oliver and Laurel to get back together, didn't it? I'm not the only one on, who's, who's back in that horse, am I? <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one who's back in that horse, like, yeah, this, there were episodes that made you go... Why aren't you two a, a couple? Oh yeah, because the CW hates main, you know, uh, hates main couples. Looking at you, Iris and Barry. Anyway, um, what else did I want to say about this? Uh, so yeah, the moment where you know where Laurel's making a promise to Oliver, it cuts away, and then the next thing you know, she's going into she's seizuring, and then she's and then she dies. So, it could be that Oliver did, like, slipped her some drug that made her, you know, look like she was dead, and he's just pretending, and now Laurel's just going to be written off the show, or something to that extent. That's what I'm thinking, is that, you know, she may be dead, but at the same time, she may be, like, dead, but just in the sense of, oh, she's never, can be never Black Canary again, and leave the show so Alicity can win forever. How wonderful. How, also, I, I know I've been saying also a lot, it's just that, you know, I just keep remembering these scenes that pop up in my head, because, you know, I'll, um, this show has now become so goddamn forgettable for me, I have to, like, my, my mind's like, oh yeah, this happened too, or this happened too, so I do apologize, I've been saying also this whole time, but yeah. Another thing that happened was that, um, what was, um, I just can't, I, I lost my train of thought because this episode made me so angry, and it, <laughs> it kind of told you how it was going to go because, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure Merlin's, you know, Thea's going to kill Merlin and, and give into her bloodlust. I'm also pretty sure Dark's going to initiate Genesis and, you know, season uh, five, maybe, the whole thing of, oh, Genesis Aftermath or something to that stupid nature. And I don't care anymore. The other thing with it is that, you know, the fun part about that grave. The Mark Guggenheim and the writing staff once talked about how, you know, they just put that scene in there to add drama. 
they just add it, and they didn't even, at the time, even they didn't know who was going to be in the grave. They just put it in there for added drama to keep viewers in there, to keep viewers locked in. To which I respond with, fuck you, because that's not how writing works. You should already have a goddamn plan. So yeah, they BS their way through the entire um, season until they finally decided, you know what? You know what? It's a good idea to kill Laurel. That character we kind uh, we kind of didn't really give much to in season um, in season two, but progressed her character su uh, you know subtly throughout seasons three and four. Made her one of the best characters. Even had some of the best chemistry with Oliver, even though they weren't together. Let's just kill her off because Alicity's the best goddamn thing ever, right? Even though it's you know we've been slugging through it and it's the most terrible work ever. So yeah, let's just totally kill off uh, you know uh, Laurel Lance. Sorry, I, I just... It is, I'm sorry for ranting, I really am. I'm just so goddamn angry by this show. There's a part of me that just wants to give up... There's a lot of me that wants to give up now and just be like, I don't even care. I don't even want to watch the last two episodes because, yeah, this... Um, this just kind of broke me because you, you killed off one of the best characters uh, in the show. Yeah, season two, the big flaw was Laurel herself being an alcoholic, but... Throughout season three and four, I hate though I hate season three. But one of the better things they did was when they did Laurel-based episodes. Yeah. Anyway, so also, but uh, another thing, there was actually a good scene in here. It's only thirty seconds long, but I love the scene where um, Oliver, you know, where Oliver go, um, goes out, walks out of the emergency room, and in comes. Uh, Lance, he, here in comes Detective Lance. He comes in, and just by he sees Oliver's face, just this destroyed look, and then instantly he goes down. He just like collapses in sadness out of he already he doesn't have to uh, Oliver doesn't have to say a word because he already knows. Oh my God, my daughter is dead. I love that. It's there's also he's just those two. Despite all the shitty work that uh, all the all the shitty writing they've been getting. They at least try to make it work. And I gotta applaud that and the rest of the actors and actresses on this show. I, I, I feel bad for them. I really do. Um, but yeah. All in all, oh boy, this show. This show. I mean, Flash has its problems too. Don't get me wrong. Flash has been having some problems. Especially with... Um, for some reason, Iris is now dating not, you know, wants to date the not J. Jonah Jameson of the show. Which I'm like, I don't care. That's just added bullshit. So, how wonderful. Even though, again, when you see Barry and Iris together, I'm like, why aren't you a couple? Why? Is, remember that episode where um, Iris got herself into trouble and she had to call Barry to come save her? And she's like, oh yeah, um, sorry, I totally, you know, I totally thought I was in the clear here, but I guess I needed your help. And how they played off, I'm like, why aren't you a couple? They had like the great, they had like a great Superman Lois Lane moment, and then he had, you know, then they're like, yeah, okay, bye, see ya. And I'm like, just fucking kiss already. But yeah, like I've said, Flash has problems, but it gets away with it because it's fun and it knows when to, um, it knows when to correct those problems. And I feel like they get the better material, the writing material, most of the time. So even though Flash is flawed, it doesn't, it, you know, it has little cracks compared to the overspewing dam of bullshit in this show. Legends of Tomorrow, I just feel like not, it's not terrible, The more, but the more I watch it, I'm like, I just don't care about anything. It's kind of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I'm a little, but at least the actors there in, in Legends feel like, it's nice to see them have good chemistry, and, but I don't care about Roy and Kendra's. Um, no, not Roy. Uh, Ray. Yeah, Ray and Kendra's sudden relationship because the second Hawkman comes back, it's going to be bullshit. It's not going to matter because then we'll get a you know love triangle bu uh, BS and yeah. So I don't really. I'm not invested in that relationship. But Sarah and Snart, on the other hand, that's something. That's a ship I could get behind. Or, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry about that. I just want, like, I know I haven't really talked much about Flash and Legends of Tomorrow, so I just thought I'd just give uh, give my thoughts real quick on that. But, you know, um, episode was terrible. And they killed off a character I had really grown to like in a really terrible season, and that one following. 
So, I'm sorry for ranting, and I do apologize for that, but this was just a really bad episode, guys, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who feels the same way. I really don't want to continue... I might not even do a season finale review for Arrow, but if I do, that'll be... I guarantee you, I don't care what happens, I don't care who they show or showcase, I'm not... I'm done. I should have ended... I should have stopped at season three, but Constantine brought me back in a few cool elements here and there, but after this, I'm done. I'm officially done. No... Yeah, season five... Uh, season five of Arrow, don't care. Gonna continue with Flash and hope it doesn't have the same season three fla uh, fate, same with Legends, but no more Arrow. Arrow, no more. <laughs> I'm waving in the white flag. I'm throwing in the towel, guys. But anyway, you guys tell me, what did you all think of last night's episode of Arrow, and what did you all think of the death that occurred? Just comment below, let me know, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.